Yeah, Meredith. Yeah. Is Christy here? Yeah. Hi, Meredith. No, I don't see her. Okay. I am here. I am here. She's here. There you go. There she is. All right. <laughs> hey, Christy. Hello. He's going to shout. All right. Oh, yeah. He's sick. All right. Here we go. I'll call to order the Town of Mad Desert Planning Board meeting for January 19th, 2022. Welcome aboard. We've got a hybrid hearing tonight, um, partial in person, mostly on Zoom. Uh, make introductions first. I have Christy do a quick Zoom spiel, and we'll get right into the uh, uh, land use amendments with Noel. Um, uh, myself, William Hanley, I'm here over at C Street. Along with me is Planning Board member Tracy Keller. Hi. Uh, we've got Meredith Randolph online. Hello. And Christy Anastasia. All right. And Dave Ashmore is, uh, he's usually joining us online. He informed me he was sick. So okay. he's not with us tonight. And uh, Christy, why don't you give us the Zoom spiel? Yes, Please. welcome <laughs> to the Mountain Desert Planning Board meeting. If you haven't Zoomed yet, you're in for a treat. Uh, we have some good technology going on and um, in the room, uh, the owl will follow people as they speak, although it doesn't look like there's a lot of people there. Um, when you are on Zoom, if you can mute yourself when you're not speaking, that would be very helpful. So we're not hearing side conversations in your home or office, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you also have the opportunity to go to the chat function and sign in with your name, um, or if you're representing an organization. So we have a roster of participants, that would be very helpful. And uh, we can accommodate probably another like 450 people. <laughs> That's all I have. Oh, whoa, wait, no, no, I lied. Um, the chat is used to sign in, put your name in there. Uh, it's not intended to be used for side conversations. If you have a question or a statement or a reaction, uh, please be recognized by the board chair and have the conversation in the entire room rather than uh, off in the chat. Thank you. Now I'm done. Thank you. We've got some minutes to approve. Um, can you remind me what meeting that was? It, it was, was January, a, uh, December 8th. Thank you. December 8th, minutes to approve. Anybody want to make a motion, feel free. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve the planning board meeting minutes of December 8th, 2021. I'll second that. All right, all those in favor, Christy? Anastasia, aye. Meredith? Randolph, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, I. Myself, William Hanley, I. And let's keep going. So item three on the agenda tonight, we have a public hearing. And uh, that is concerning the land use zoning amendments for the 2022 special town meeting on March 8th, 2022. And Noel, I'm gonna gladly pass the torch to you. Hang on, I gotta let you know it was published. It, and um, of course, Kim's gonna first let us know yep. that it was published. Yep. Yes, this was published in the December 30th, 2021 edition of the Mount Desert Islander and the January 6th <clears throat> Mount Desert Islander. Thank you. Watch that. All right, Thanks, you're Kim. on. Thanks, Thanks Noel. Noel. <laughs> Happy to be here. Yes. Glad yep. to so we have um, for this upcoming special town meeting, uh, we there are two um, land use related warrant articles that are being proposed. Um, the first one is really, uh, which I'll share the screen so everybody can see it. Um, happy to uh, breeze through this one a little bit, but this is really a carryover from the um, 2021 annual town meeting where uh, this article was skipped over because some of the language in the description wasn't quite 
right, it referenced a, a different section in, uh, in the table that, that we're dealing with. Um, so the intent of this article is really to amend, um, uh, to, to remove uh, footnote four from certain permitted uses that are in a stream protection district. And um, it's consistent with um, state shoreland zoning requirements and, and the intent is to try to make this uh, th those provisions a little more consistent with you know what shoreland zoning actually requires. So as I'm scrolling through, um, you can see just I've highlighted some of the sections that are that are uh, permitted uses, but removing footnote four. And um, footnote four really is a, a variance. Uh, there's a, a reference back to requiring a variance uh, from the Board of Appeals um, dealing with setbacks uh, for other structures. And this these things that we're removing aren't really applicable to that uh, provision. So with that uh, convoluted explanation, I'm happy to answer any questions or scroll through. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Now's your chance. Any questions? Nope. Nope. All right, Noel, keep going. Okay. I do recommend this one. Well, are we going to do this all at once, or no? Gonna... You want to? You got You got two separate warrant articles. <clears throat> got it. So we need uh, a motion to recommend this to the warrant committee. No. Um, to the May, the March eight, twenty twenty two town meeting. Okay. Special town meeting. Excuse me. So we make a motion for this specific warrant article to be considered for the for the March 8, 2022 special town meeting. There yes. you go. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Meredith. <laughs> Anastasia, I'll second that emotion. All right. So all those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Good. Yeah. That's everybody, right? That's everybody. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so then moving on to the next one. Um, let me just pull that one up. Uh, this next one is a is a, an amendment to the land use ordinance that relates to um, access provisions for lots. So it's a 6B11 provision. Uh, and it's really intended to help try to address some of these scenarios that are happening quite frequently where we have an, uh, an existing approved lot that is on a, uh, like a, a currently non-conforming uh, road or, or driveway access. So either it doesn't meet the right-of-way requirement or some other provision of the access provisions that are currently in the ordinance. And it gives lots that were created before um, 2015 uh, a little more flexibility to try to work with Kim to, to use their existing um, status and be able to, to access if you wanted to get a building permit for a home or something like that. Um, and then there's a separate part to that, which deals with lots that were created after uh, this 2015 provision, and it still allows you to go to the planning board. Um, so if you have, say, a 10-acre lot, and then you divide it into two acres, two, two five-acre lots, and you want to create something on a substandard road, you could still go to the planning board through that provision that's in the subdivision ordinance um, to try to get some waivers. But um, it's not the same as if you are an existing lot that doesn't meet those standards. Um, we really try to focus on uh, the, the principle that in any in any event, we want to make sure um, that we're providing uh, safe access to a lot for emergency vehicles. Um, and uh, Kim has the ability, or the CEO, I shouldn't say Kim um, specifically, but the CEO has the ability in the first instance to, uh, or in both instances, really to ask for um, guidance from the fire chief in terms of, hey, is this... Uh, driveway access or this road access really um, um, 
you know, adequate for emergency vehicle access and those kinds of things. So uh, we spent quite a bit of time going back and forth with the town's attorneys, just trying to iron out some language on this and provide a little flexibility for um, a lot of these provisions that seem to be popping up. Happy to answer questions or try to anyway, or maybe Kim, Kim might want to jump in and um, if I missed anything in that description, Kim. Um, no, I think you explained it <clears throat> pretty well. Um, this also, as, as Noel stated, this, this is some relief to lawful pre-existing non-conforming lots of record also. Um, and this has to do specifically with public roads. Um, and that's kind of the only thing I want to add. <clears throat> and we've been dealing with a lot of this lately, Noel. <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a tricky one. I think uh, Mount Desert is a really interesting community in that there, there are a lot of these examples where lots were created um, a while back and, and right of way standards change, road um, width standards change, and, and we're trying to trying to figure out a way to be helpful. And Greg. I believe Greg, Greg's got his hand up. I, uh, thanks, I just had a quick question of clarity by the way the screen was, um, Noel or Kim or somebody. It appears that by the language that the cutoff is at two lots. Um, and so similarly, a non-conforming condition of a road or right of way that was accessing three lots, uh, the, uh, the roadway would then still be in play. And this actually benefits when there's only two lots. That's what I read it as. No, um, go no ahead. The, the sorry, the private road is three or more lots. Driveway is two or less. So Correct. this is, so, go ahead. Yeah, so when there's more than two lots, then it still defaults to the, uh, the subdivision standard or the road waiver provision. No, this is gonna give me authority. Uh, this is for lots created on or before June 6, 2015, this will allow me and or with the assistance of the fire chief to allow pre-existing pre uh, roads as they are today and or driveways, as long as the fire chief feels that he can get his fire apparatus or emergency vehicles there, then I would issue permit to not require the roadway to be upgraded or upgraded or driveway. But for lots created after June 6, 2015, they're either going to have to bring the road up to the subdivision standards of 514 in the ordinance or get a waiver through the planning board. Right. That that explanation, I I appreciate it. I just was clarifying the point that that the limitation of the change of the code enforcement review stops at two lots because it says driver that serves up to two. So no. once there's more than uh, more than two, it still goes the way it is now. If you're so Greg, the the provision on uh, number one provision is for lots that are created after the 2015 deadline and you have to carry on as, as, as it is today. So for two lots, you still have to meet um, the street, the, the driveway standards. And for three or more lots, you still have to meet the road standards that are in the subdivision ordinance. That's after 2015. So anything before 2015, Kim has the ability to provide for a lot that was created before 2015. It doesn't matter if it's, it's we're only dealing with one lot. Yeah, if you okay. create two lots out of one lot, then you still have to, then you're actually two new lots. So you have to meet the current standards. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just couldn't see the bottom part on the screen there, yep. thanks. Sorry. Yep, that's okay. <laughs> so can you explain again, so how does this change if, if a lot was created before 2016? 15. Yep. What would it have been and what is it, what are you changing to now? So what it would be, what it is currently is the same as if you create a new lot. So if you are on a lot that was created, if you're on a lot that is accessed by a substandard, some, some, something that doesn't meet current access standards. It's, so the right of way isn't up to, up to the 50 foot right of way if you're in a subdivision or the road width is too narrow. You have to go either you either you have some significant limitations to what you can do to that lot, or you have to try to figure out a way to go through that planning board process. And I think it's like, I don't remember what the section is, it's six, it's five something in the subdivision ordinance that allows applicants. 
514 is the street design and construction standards, but 6.1.1 is the waiver provision for the planning board. Right. So those are lot, the, any, in any event today, that's what would have to happen. And so there are lots that are, that were created like quite a few years ago, uh, even before, well before 2015, that were at the time presumed to be buildable lots. And because the dimensional standards for driveway access or road access changed, they are no longer um, buildable unless you get a waiver through the planning board or some other some other thing which we've been trying to work on. So what we're trying to do is, is address those lots. So they're not actually creating a new lot, you're actually creating a, you're actually providing more flexibility for lots that were created and assumed to be buildable prior to the time where, where like around 2015 when a lot of dimensional standards changed on roads. Uh, but I'm just concerned that we just made a major ruling that's likely to get sent to court and we're taking the wind out of our own verdict. Is that? I'm not familiar with the ruling, Meredith, but I, I mean, we've been working on this change for a little while now, that, but I'd, I'd have to defer to, you know, Kim or do some research on that. But it, it, uh, let me just say, say um, also that if you made a ruling based on current standards, it doesn't mean that we didn't learn, learn a lesson yeah. from those current standards that yeah, might need to be changed in the year. Meredith, remember too, it was primarily a title right and interest issue, and it can't be retro. Okay, so we're not going to undo our own verdict. No. No. Okay. So, it's a complicating, um, it's one of the things in your ordinance that's really um, perplexing and how to try to deal with it. <laughs> so this is, you know, aside from the provision in the subdivision ordinance that does allow some flexibility, we're also trying to clarify that, you know, if you have an existing approved lot that met some standards when it was approved, you should be able to get to that lot to do, you know, to build a house. Seems like we've had a lot of this. Lately. That's why we're doing this. Yeah, it seems like yeah. we have a lot lately. In particular, it seems very, very recently. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't take away the, the ability for somebody to come to the board and say, we're, we're trying to do some new things at the end of a, you know, at the end of a subdivision where we're creating new lots and we should be able to have a conversation with the board like that provision that we adopted a couple of years ago. That's still in place. So if somebody's developing, they have 10 acres inside of a subdivision and the road going to that, it's not completely getting rid of the need of any lot that is accessed before, was no. created before 2015. There's still some sense that they need to bring a road up. They just have more, more ability to get that waived. Yeah, or the streamlining the process so that Kim can make a determination that yes, this lot is actually safe for access. The principle is you want to maintain safe access to all lots for, for emergency vehicles. And that's like the founding, that's sort of the foundation of access to a parcel. Yeah. And this, this change in certain scenarios will just allow, it's a more streamlined process where Kim or the CEO can make that determination with, if she wants a, an input from the fire chief in terms of like, okay, here's the dimensional standards you need for a fire truck or whatever. But, but in the, I'm just, I'll use this, the simple example in my mind continues to be, um, you know, if you have a 14 foot wide road already driveway getting to your parcel that was approved a long time ago, and you're on, you're on a 20 foot wide right of way instead of a 50 foot wide right of way, the, the access provisions are still, they're still safe access, but you might not be able to do that because you're not, you might not be able to get there because you're on a narrower right of way than is currently permitted. It's, you, know, you know what I mean? I'm not sure. If I'm I do wonder, that. and I only am thinking of um, the worry of like that we kick thing. We seem to have a number of subdivisions that were developed or we've run into subdivisions that were developed and although they probably should have had roads put in they didn't they just sold off the lots there have been scenarios so then the people who go to build the houses end up being told that they have to build a massive road um, where it really should have been the developer uh, and whether this so let's say 
you want to have a sub de a de a development that's you drive through a you know the the that you you bought 15 acres that's on the other side of a road that doesn't meet the standard you know it seems to me that you you end up is there the potential of just kicking the can down the road of like then then you end up with more development down this road with a substandard road only in the event that like if you're are if the lot already exists at the end of that road then you're not really kicking the can down the road. If you are saying taking that lot at the end of the road and turning it into two lots or three lots or five lots, yeah. then this provision still requires you to go to the planning board and get um, either waivers or have that discussion that you'd want when you're actually okay. increasing the intensity of use on that particular road. Yeah. yeah. And I would also add the other pin I would put in this whole conversation is we're not really kicking the can down the road, but as as we're starting to like think about comprehensive planning and those kinds of things we may want to start to discuss like right of ways and road standards just as a something because it seems like it's a pretty common issue in town anyway that's a pin that's not for today but i'm just throwing that out there happy to answer other questions I make a motion to approve this for recommendation at the special town meeting on March. What was it? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Anastasia, second. All right. All those in favor? Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. And myself, William Hanley, I. Great, that was it. All right. We have a couple things coming up for this special, I mean, for the annual town meeting, um, which just to prep everybody on, um, we're looking at um, adding some provisions that are required through state shoreland zoning uh, re around permitting uh, requirements for adding photographs in the shoreland zone. Um, lots of uh, thinking about some language around accessory dwelling units just to clarify what was intended um, under that provision we're looking at some language to allow um, non-conforming lots to be altered without um, losing their non-conforming status so if you have a, a substandard lot and you add a, add a change of boundary line or add a little bit of acreage so it becomes less non-conforming but is still non-conforming uh, you can do that without losing your grandfathering um, there's a rezoning request um, that's being discussed at the Luzo committee level uh, for a small parcel on Long Pond in an RP district. And uh, I think that's about it. A couple of maybe one or two other things. Good stuff. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. See ya. See, See ya. Noel. All right. That was item three on the agenda. Let's move on to item four. We have a conditional use approval application tonight. It's conditional use approval application 24, 2021. Owner name, Mount Desert 365. Applicant is College of Atlantic. Agent is Miller Doherty. Location is 141 Main Street, Northeast Harbor. Tax map 24, lot 78, zoning district, village commercial, Purpose restaurant use, and we had a site inspection at 430. And was this advertised in Abutters notified, Kim? Yes, this was advertised, <clears throat> excuse me, in the December 30th. Uh, Mount Desert Islander and Abutters notices were sent out. They were sent out on January 4th. Great. And we had, again, a site inspection at 430. Uh, I was the sole attendee along with Miller, so I, I guess I drew the straw to report on the site report or site meeting. And uh, let's see, uh, Miller took me in the first floor there. Uh, we talked about that the, the first floor space is being partitioned off to about 300 square feet, not very large. Uh, it's going to, you know, the use was was kind of in between didn't really categorize into retail and it's not a full-blown restaurant that it's 
really kind of a, uh, they're going to be retailing like produce and things like that. But in the off season, you might be able to go in and be like a, a, a small table or two in there where you can, you know, get a sandwich or something. But it didn't sound like it was going to be like a full blown restaurant use. There was going to be a commercial kitchen to it component to it uh, it's all on the first floor all in that front space and millard i'm going to turn it over to you to add to that and take it from there thank you mr chairman and thank you planning board members and and kim uh, for hearing this application tonight i'm so it might have been clearer if i had come and gone online so we wouldn't have to wear this mask but but that was a, that was a really good summary we hope uh, you know you remember last year we received a conditional use permit for the entire project. And we, we planned that as a retail space, not knowing, really not having any clients in mind, but making, we wanted to make sure that whatever happened there would support the, the year round use of, of uh, in, in Northeast Harbor. And so we've come, we have just recently within the last two and a half months, we have been approached by a client who mm -hmm. wants to use local produce and other local materials from artisans and from farms to um, and have a kitchen in the space that would allow this this um, business to do value uh, value added products that then she she would sell to go only in the space but um, chairman is correct that in the winter this is going to be a year-round project we're with this, this won't be just a summer project, but will be will be a year round business. And so in the winter, what what they would like to do is have a couple of tables where if they're waiting to get say spaghetti sauce that's made from tomatoes at Beach Hill Farm, that they can have a cup of coffee and maybe a croissant and as they're waiting. But definitely in the summer, it would just be a to go. Uh, it's basically so we were stuck. But the bottom line is, by the way, can I introduce Callie Martinez? <laughs> of course. I completely yeah. forgot Callie. I, I sincerely apologize. Welcome aboard, Callie. Callie is a senior. She's a senior um, from San Antonio, Texas, and she's been my assistant for a, a long time. She's worked on this project. She's done. She's she's working on student housing projects, also a bunch of stuff at school. So she's really been helping me with this with this project. So I'm sorry, Callie. I apologize. But what we were faced with was the fact that that you could almost do everything that this business would be doing, except you have to have a kitchen in order to do the value add added end of it. And so, in order to have a kitchen, um, it, it's clearly that a kitchen is not an accessory use to a retail space. Mm -hmm. So we really were forced to come back and say, even even though I mean, by the time you split the space up. It's essentially a 300 square foot kitchen and a 300 square foot retail space on the front. So it's clearly, it's not going to be a major restaurant mm -hmm. operation there. There's just not enough room to do that. But in order to be able to do what this client wants to do, which I think is a smart move, because I think this will, no matter whether that we're successful in negotiating with this client, clearly having that opportunity would afford more Year round. I mean, it would certainly support a year round business more than a simply an empty space that might become a gallery in the summer and then close down in the winter. So we're here tonight only because we fall in between that. We're certainly not a retail space, not with that, not with a kitchen, the size of the kitchen that we're going to have in there. Um, but we're also not a restaurant, but it's the only thing that does the, the only definition of the land use ordinance that does cover what we're doing. So that's why we're coming back to for a, uh, a conditional use permit for a restaurant. Great. Well, <clears throat> I guess with that, I'll open it up to any questions from the public. I have one. It's Steve Kirsch. Yep. Hi, Bill. Hi, Hi Miller. Hi. Um, Hi. Um, I'm curious if you have a kitchen back there. Is it, are you? Um, is, there, is there a dumpster in that in the back, you know, on the Tracy Road side, which is where, you know, where I am? Um, are you going to add an add dumpster back there? Another dumpster? Yeah, we have, we will have another dumpster? No. Well, I mean, we'll I mean, another one in addition to, um, you know, the Colonels has got theirs back there, too. 
Right. It, we, would, we would have a single dumpster to serve our facility. Right. That's, right. So that's, it's, right. So that's back on the Tracy Roadside, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because there's no there's no way we can put one on. No. Absolutely. 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 Got that. And all deliveries go that way too, the same as on, on that same access road. Yeah, the, the driver there. Right. But regardless of whether or not we have um, whatever the use is in the front, we would always have, we'd have to serve the apartments in the back. Gotcha. So we would, we've always planned to have a dumpster. But it's gotcha. not going to, won't, won't, we won't add another one in order to serve this use. Oh, uh, more than the one that you're already going to have for the, the the building that you're building for the tenants, etc. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. It will not. Oh, great. It will not be two. It will not. Oh, cool. Two. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. I didn't hear the. It's Katrina. I didn't hear the answer to where are the deliveries going to go. Are they going to come in the front on Main Street, or are they going to come in the back from Tracy Road? I didn't hear the answer to that question. Yeah, I think I think it's probably like most. It could be both, but. Um, but we have certainly been working with with Stephanie and and uh, to make sure that area is going to be really cleaned up um, in the back. So I, I I would imagine most of the deliveries are going to happen through the front. But the, but trash removal would be certainly from the back. Thank you, thank you. No problem. Thank you. Any additional questions? Meredith. Phil, is it an appropriate time for me to ask a question? Absolutely, always, Meredith. Um, so since this really isn't a restaurant, but we'd be giving a permit for a restaurant, if it decided, the occupants decided to truly make it a restaurant, does that require coming back to planning board? They started saying, let's set up some tables, let's. Well, they have um, submitted an application that said they will have tables. Yeah. Any any amendment that's different from what you approved in this application, depending how big or small, because I have the authority to do minor amendments, um, depending if I feel it's a major versus minor, it would come back to you. And Meredith, I would suspect that Kim's going to probably pull the board if it comes back or not. I usually do. Right. Yeah, no, I just was thinking of the the sort of, oh, it's it's in the summertime, they're mostly selling produce, and they're just going to offer a place, you know, that'll be more sit down in the wintertime. It doesn't really matter because we're just going to be giving a, you know, they can decide to do it year round if they want. Well, I think if there was an approval of this application that it's going to really be kind of a, a, a specific approval relative to the scope of operation being proposed. And if and if if they came back and there was a change of scope, we're probably going to get pulled about it and the board made a determination that it was a significant enough scope change where it's, it's going to come back before us. Okay. Yeah, Sure. Meredith, um, it's, a, it's a really good question. I, and I, I, I would ask you, I, I'd be more than willing to show you the space anytime, but by the time you split it in half, uh, the number of, even if you were to do a restaurant, which we have no, no, um, that, that isn't even a consideration of ours. The, um, the, the number of, the number of seats would be, I mean, again, I think the, the connection we're looking for is the connection between COA, the farms, the other artisans in the area, those sort of that sort of connection, and and we're certainly not looking to get into the restaurant business. But it it looks like, and, and again, the the deal isn't done yet. But it looks like this would be the perfect, and we wouldn't be going for a restaurant. Uh, I want to assure you that if there were another use that defined better what we were doing, we would not be asking for a restaurant. It seems like a good idea. I feel like I've heard for years people saying that they they wish that there was, I don't know if that's what part of what you'd offer, but that that there should be a commercial um, kitchen available to people that people want to start businesses 
making something, but it has to be made in a commercial kitchen. And that's, you know, if there was more of a, an opportunity of a, a co-op commercial kitchen or something that they could rent, people could launch businesses through that. Yeah, you, may, may I respond? Sure. Um, that, I just want to, that's not the intention of this. This would be a business that would be run by a company that, and that they would be producing the food. But what, they, but what they're really interested in is making sure the clients can see what's happening in the prep, in the pre kitchen preparation area, how the, how the, you know, the organic foods are being used. And that, that's, that was re that's really important to, the, to this uh, client. Any other, yeah. Any other questions? Comments? Going once. Twice. Greg, was that a hand up? <laughs> All right, I'll close I'll close public comment and <clears throat> let's keep rolling all right um anybody like to first make a motion well first i'll ask if there's any conflict of interest on the board with this application none heard uh then i'll ask uh, if there's any motion out there to find the application complete make a motion to find the application complete Anastasia, second. All those in favor, Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. We got the that complete. Um, uh, let's do the. Would anybody care to make a motion to uh, approve the application? I'll make a motion to approve the application. Tracy Keller, I'll second that. All right, and then we press the pause button and we go through the review of the application. Um, would anybody care to make a motion about using the short form checklist? I make a motion we use the short form checklist. Anastasia. Randolph, I second that. Oops, sorry. Uh, Tracy, Tracy beat you to it, Meredith. That's okay. <laughs> Tracy Keller, a second. All right. All those in favor, Christy. Anastasia, aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Myself, William Hanley, short form checklist it is. I have that before me. I've got the application as well. And let's go through it. So we are starting with section 6a general performance standards 6a1 compatibility bill are we going through to like this is a new application or are we going through the old application and just seeing if there are any changes we're, we're looking at it as a new application for a new use okay yeah so section 6A1 compatibility. And under compatibility, we commonly talk about the different components of compatibility, mm -hmm. uh, physical size, visual impact, proximity to other structures, density of development. I would say uh, we're, we're really considering the, this is a use question. I would think a, a, a use like this is more than compatible on Main Street and C application. Uh, 6A2 erosion and sedimentation control, uh, NA, there's, there's no change to the building footprint or anything to accommodate this change of use. Uh, 6A3, highway safety. Um, and so, here we start talking about parking and um, what the applicant is saying about parking is that on-site parking for workers 
during project, 10 total parking spaces will be provided by the applicant. Truck delivery will be either be the rear entrance um, and try to avoid Main Street. And then under sufficient off street parking shall be available. Uh, the applicant says worker parking on site. Tends Wait, is that, oh, sorry. But I, it says worker. I, I said waiter. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that says worker, Miller. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It does. It does. We're good. Mm -hmm. All right. Worker um, parking. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. Worker parking on site. Uh, Ten spaces total are to be provided by the applicant. And Kim, there was some. Is this the time to bring up parking? I would this suspect, yeah. and we received a question about parking yep. today. Yep. Um, Millard, when you guys got approval for, yes. the, for the multi purpose, multi use, or multi dwellings, I should say, you agreed at the time to have seven spaces, off street parking spaces, and it was also a condition um, to be secured prior to me issuing the occupants for the building. Yes. So you're adding we three more? Pardon me? You're going to add three more because you say you're providing 10. Right, three are on site and we're providing okay, seven, seven on site. Okay. We, don't see, we don't see this change as adding any, this is the, almost the identical use that we would see, that we expected to see from that, retail. Mm -hmm. from the retail space. So we're really not, we're, we're asking that you not mm -hmm. um, you know, ask us to provide more. We, we're, we know that we have to find seven more off street parking spaces before the before Kim will issue a certificate of occupancy. Any um, question any questions from the board speak. about parking? It goes like this, Kim. Just like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So C application highway safety. Um, <clears throat> six A four impact on town services. Uh, you guys don't have anything filled out under that. You want to? It's the, the it's not, nothing's. Well, I would say it's an A then because it's the same, exactly yeah. the same as it was before. I would say it is applicable, but just say it's not going to unduly burden the capacity okay. for town yeah. facilities. Thank, sorry. Does, Can you write that in here? This I will. Is the original. Okay. Yeah. Kind of just saying, okay, so, you just burden the capacity the facility. Yep. Yeah. So six eight over here. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Comfortable. Sure. So six A four <laughs> with C application and the original application is being amended to indicate there's not going to be any burden upon uh, town services. Six A five land suitability. They say N A. Mm -hmm. um, 6A6, lighting outdoor. Uh, the applicant says all shielded downward pointing and dark sky compliant lighting, no flood lighting, outdoor light is lim limited to the walkway entrance and the exits. See application. 6A7, stormwater is an NA. Uh, vegetation. Six A eight and A. Just say facilities. Can I just say facilities? Which I write the whole thing out. No. Six A nine dust fumes vapors odors and gases N A. <laughs> then the findings of fact are that the are that they are presented by the applicant <laughs> and attached <laughs> application and the conclusion of law is that the proposed use is in compliance with all standards of <laughs> section six A. So moved. I, I second that. All right. All those in favor, Tracy. Uh, Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. All right. Section 6B. Let's see. So Section 6B, Kim, is like all. Um, signage. They're, they've got right. signage that okay. um, they won't exceed 32 square feet in aggregate. Right. So, section 6B1, 
agriculture, NA, 6B2 air landing sites, NA, 6B7 excavation, NA, 6B8 fences and walls, NA, and 6B16 sign regulations. And the applicant says is a sign as shown on the architectural rendering aggregate, they will not ex exceed 32 square feet. See application, 6B18 wireless communication facility, my favorite, uh, NA. 6B19 animal husbandry two, NA. 6B20 mobile food vendors, NA. 6B21, rooming house na and 6b22 hotels and motels na so the findings of fact are that the proposed use will include none of the specific activities or land uses described in section 6b except for 6b16 and the conclusion of law is that section 6b is not applicable except for section 6b16 for which the standard has been met so moved Tracy Keller. Meredith Randolph, a second. All right, all those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. Um, section 6C, <clears throat> Shoreland Zoning. You're in, you're in Village Commercial, NA. So the proposed Ute lot is entirely outside the shoreline zone and the conclusion law is section 6C is not applicable. You got it, Tracy. Tracy Keller, so moved. Meredith Randolph, I second. All those in favor, Tracy. Uh, Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. Then we, since we're not in the shoreland zone, we don't have to do section yep. five nine. And um, do we need a motion on that? Yes, we probably yeah, should. So, as far as the application. Yeah. So the conclusion of law or the findings of fact is that. Um, five point nine. Five point nine are essentially the same as. 6C, the findings of fact are that the proposed loot lot is entirely outside of the shoreland zone and conclusion of law is that section 5.9 uh, does not apply. Uh, so moved, Tracy Keller. Randolph, I'll second. All those in favor, Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Christy. Anastasia, I. And myself, William Hanley, I. Um, so, on to permit conditions. Just state by marshal approval for the change of use. Yeah. Yes. Validations of the building permit, the change of use building permit. You guys heard that, that the permit condition is the approval of the state fire marshal's office for the change of use. Uh, and this is, there's this whole building is already, it's just for this use. So the whole question of the parking, it remains the same. We don't need to put this on that condition on of that they find 7,500 spots on top of this application as well. The parking requirements were on the original application. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. It's on the flat. Yeah. It's on the flat. They're recorded. Yeah. It, I think I think we covered it at, on the original review of the application. All right. So you could include it. You could not include it. I don't know. <laughs> well, I would include it only because they put it in their application. Yeah. Really. Well, then we're fine with it. Yeah. Either way. So then no the, you don't get so out of it one way or the other, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> it'll, be it'll be consistent. So, <laughs> so that there's a second permit condition that an additional three parking spots will be provided. Is no. That, no. no, 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 no. They'll so, have that there's three on site and then they'll have seven on site. 
So Karen, my, my bad. <laughs> You Before guys. the occupancy, because you can't occupy this and save the occupancy. That's, I know that. We, we, yeah. we completely understand this. Okay. Yeah. Heidi, did you understand that second permit condition? Not really. Um, I've got, can you hear me? You guys can hear yes. me, right? Yes. Loud and clear. Um, loud and clear. <laughs> so parking, what I had written was parking requirements as on the original application. But do you want me to specify three on site and seven off site? I think we should. And we want to do it in a way that doesn't say we're you not doubling. Do the, you can do the same motion you did when you did the approval originally is to uh, to approve the application with condition that seven additional parking spaces are secured for um, are secured prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Because they'll have three on site and then they'll have to secure seven. All righty. And that's not uh, doubling the requirement up, correct? No, no, no I'd say, uh, then I would say per, uh, per approval um, of March 17, 2021. All right, great. I've got it. All set. I'm good. How about yourself? Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Other planning boards feeling good? <laughs> planning board members, I should say. <laughs> All right. So, circling back to the approval, then uh, press the play button and uh, back to the approval vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the application with the uh, um, identified permit conditions. Tracy. Uh, Tracy Keller, I. Meredith. Randolph, I. Christy. Anastasia, I. And myself, William Hanley, I. Congratulations. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks a bunch. Okay, I'll get out of here. I should get back to work. Be okay. careful driving. Be careful driving. Yeah, it's yes. black ice. Black, yeah. black ice. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I don't live around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful for Brock and Brock. Yeah. Be careful walking. Be careful oh, walking, driving. Can we just can we just extend this meeting a couple more hours to look, look at look, look, look. Uh, We have one more application. Oh, you do. I'll leave now so you can get to it. So you can go home. I'm thank you very much, everyone. Hours, Thanks, Miller. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And when you guys can, please come in and sign the, Thanks, Bill. the approval. That's them. Yep. Yeah. That's that one. Thank you. Thank you. George, you need to make a grand entrance because the owl has focused on your leaving. <laughs> oh, it finally goes down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Is that, is that brown bag belong to somebody? Oh, yeah. oh she's my lunch. That's your lunch? It's dinner time. Mm -hmm. Double seven. All right. See you. Peace. Take care. Item five on the agenda tonight. This is a continuation from our December 10th, 2021 hearing. And December 8th. December 8th. Thank you. And bear with me while I read through this. All right, so item five, we have a land, this is relative to land use zoning ordinance section 6B11 lots access. Um, no lot may be built upon or otherwise developed unless it has a private road or driveway for access to a public way by a valid right of way benefiting the lot or by ownership of land abutting the public way. If more than two lots are accessed by the same private road, then it must meet the street design and construction standards of section 5.14 of the subdivision ordinance. If no more than two lots are accessed by the same private road or driveway, then it must meet either the said street and design construction standards or the driveway construction standards of section 6B6 of the ordinance. A pre-existing primary access drive that serves up to two existing lots 
need not meet the requirements of section 6b6. All lots must maintain safe access for fire, police, and emergency vehicles as determined by the fire chief. And then the subdivision um, ordinance talks about um, sec in section six, waiver and modifications of the ordin of this ordinance, uh, section six, 6.1.1, where the board finds that the private road providing access to a lot or lots cannot meet the street design and construction standards of section 5.14, because A, that the application of land use restrictions would prevent the work required to bring the existing road into compliance, or B, the physical conditions of the site render strict compliance impossible, then the board may waive such standards. However, in such cases, the board must find that A, the proposed plan brings the road into compliance as much as feasible. B, the proposed plan will provide safe access to and from the property. And C, the proposed plan will allow for access to the site for emergency vehicles. And so tonight we have uh, property owners, Hillary and Philip Kennedy, agent Greg Johnston from GF Johnston Associates. Property location is off Raspberry Lane here in Northeast Harbor. Tax map 27, lot 25 zone is uh, village residential one. And the purpose is request a waiver of the street design and construction standards of section 5.14 of the subdivision ordinance for an existing private road. And Greg, I'm going to let you talk now. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we've um, all that sounds familiar from our earlier discussion. Um, based on the last meeting with the board, it seemed we wanted to delve into some more of the nuts and the bolts of the request. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to present um, some of those to the board. Um, if I'm able to share screen, I'd probably just like to walk through uh, some of the factors that affect um, the application of the ordinance would increase nonconformities. Um, so let's just start at the entrance of Raspberry Lane and um, Sinclair Road. I'll rearrange my screen here. So we talked before that the, um, the subdivision standard is that strict application requires a 50 foot wide right of way. Um, this right of way itself is 16 and a half feet wide. Um, in that, uh, we also have to recognize that a road itself, um, when you look at the dimensional standards in section three, four, requires setbacks to the road. So um, in line with the ordinance, a, a, a strict uh, sort of application of that, um, makes the setback um, to this adjoining structure, um, just to call that east of Raspberry Lane. Sinclair Road's already orientated. Sinclair Road's here. Raspberry Lane's running page east-west. Um, certainly a 20-foot setback um, on that road or an increase in the wide away that side makes that structure more non-conforming. Um, so we talked about this and said, well, then, um, it, we don't want to increase nonconformities. The ordinance actually requires that we don't when we look at this road waiver. Um, we look at the other side of the road. And if you had a 16 and a half foot wide right of way, what would you do to a right of way? And I'm, I even cringed to sketch this for the residents that here, but say, hypothetically, if you had to have a 50 foot wide right of way, put a little tick mark on the plan that you guys have all had, a 50 foot wide right of way would, would incur a taking of about 33 and a half feet um, from the westerly abutter. Um, Subsequently, um, even if somebody was willing to convey that right of way, um, that structure would automatically need to meet the setback to a private right of way, which would be 10 feet, which would make this structure non-conforming. Um, so we look at what the ordinance says and what required for right of ways, the 50 foot really would increase the non-conformities. Um, but even in spite of that, um, as indicated before, we did uh, reach out um, to the abutter. Um, I think we have a letter in there and um, not surprisingly um, with the property they own, they're not interested in a very wide uh, subdivision road that would be 22 feet all of a sudden constructed by the, behind the house. Um, the letter in there, and I think we mentioned the plan where I was like, what do people think? Can you widen the right of way? Um, I think the informed request was done 
um, by Matthew Bard's office outlining the conditions. Um, they have no interest in conveying a right of way, which would increase the roadside behind their house for um, you know, a single lot. I think in that sort of context, it's also important to recognize Sinclair Road, the town road adjacent to the site is only 20 feet wide paved. So it brings in a question of like, does all the, all the houses along Sinclair Road and the public way get permits for construction when the paved road is only 20 feet wide? Um, there's a lot of complexities there and I actually um, pretty encouraged by what I heard earlier in the ordinance changes. Um, we are, or this lot, the Kenny's lot is an existing lot of record. It's been around at least in the current conditions since the forties that we traced back. Um, other conditions which would render uh, strict application um, increase in nonconformities we talked about as we get into the site. Uh, sorry about my curse ring. Uh, there is a stream through the site. Um, it's regulated by the DEP. Um, they have a permit for construction and disturbance, but certainly um, widening through that area um, doesn't seem in the best interest of both the resources of the stream um, and that that certainly poses limitations um, on what we can do for for access. Um, but as we kind of heard what the board um, spoke to last meeting, and we looked at the standards and said, well, what what are we up against? The, really, the subdivision ordinance is a 16 foot traveled way, um, and the ordinance actually says to the um, it uses the term to bring the road into compliance as much as feasible. Well. I think it's pretty reasonable to say that once we're inside um, the traveled way that we um, are able to increase the road to being 16 feet of stabilized uh, traveled way. I, I've spoken to um, the owners um, and I said, well, how do, we, how do we put our best foot forward within the rights that they have? And seeing the plan we've committed down here is that they will, once inside their property, and of course, beyond what we're calling a brook crossing, uh, widen the road. We will have that stabilized um, shoulder built. I'm um, admittedly said in the application, we take the last, call it few inches of that gravel, get a little bit of loam in there so that, you know, a vehicle tire can be supported, but it's not going to be wet lawn all the time. It's just something that if it's needed, a wheel can be there, but still can keep in with the, um, I would say the neighborhood character um, that you see all, all around um, Northeast. Um, and I think then we also um, can talk about what the um, intent is. And I think the, the road waiver um, request is, is established so the board can actually think about these conditions. The, the strict, hey, here's the rules. These should apply carte blanche. Um, I think it's there to give the board some reasonable control on it. Um, this isn't a situation um, which I think the road, road rules were intended. You've got a long subdivision road that's several thousand feet in the woods. Um, response times are already difficult for emergency vehicles out there. The ability to have vehicles pass one another on those roads is super important. We can't underestimate how that would happen. And I think that's what the road standards are for. Sure, they want two-way traffic. Um, curiously enough, we also think about 16 foot wide, 16 foot wide access um, that's in the subdivision also is what's the width of a parking spot? Parking spot is eight feet wide. So even in 16 feet, two cars can pass. Um, I think it's reasonable to say that um, the improvements of using the entire width of the um, um, 16 and a half foot right of way um, uh, to the degree that the owners agreed to say, well, I guess we'll do underground power to free up space at their expense uh, to expand that traveled way um, um, within, within the 16 and a half foot wide right of way. So I think all the... Um, um, signals are there of what makes sense. And um, I'm happy to hear more comments and questions from the board. Um, and um, but well, I guess the one last thing I, I didn't mention is that we always kind of think about the right of way, the road width and, and the subdivision standards, but um, it's challenged by the board to say, hey, we need to know more about this, this proposal. Um, we look at the subdivision standards that are referenced and required in section uh, 514. There's like 24 standards associated with the road. And there's really only like three being requests to be modified. Uh, the road width and the right of way um, and, and how we treat the shoulders. But the whole, you know, in the term of meeting the ordinance to the extent practical, they're meeting it. And so 
it took me a while to realize that all those criteria are in that one simple sentence of 514. And when you look at each one of those individually in which we provided you in your package, we're actually really bringing this into a, um, a really safe access. Uh, the fire chief has issued his letter in agreement. Um, and so I think with um, the progression of the project, it's become better. Um, and uh, I think safe access can certainly be maintained um, into the site under the existing right of way. Um, and also I would, I would just add one factor in here that's of a minor interest, um, but the board might even consider that at such this point in the line, there's really only two lots accessing this right away. The road waiver request really is all through here because at this point it technically becomes a driveway because it's no more than two users. Um, that's besides the point. Um, we think that the applicants have put forward a, a good proposal. I think it's in the spirit of the ordinance um, to which safe access is maintained. Um, and I think you guys have the tools to um, in the package to, to review um, the criteria against the, the request. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. And you know, from the December 8th hearing, I will say with the with the presentation you made, one, one of the key requests from the board was just we had more quantifiable explanation um, and foundation for the application for the waiver request and that that plan you just shared with us, uh, you know, is, is very helpful. So thank you. Sure. And then I'll, I'll open it up to any questions from the public as to as to this application. Any questions in general, comments? You know, Greg, it's, I, I've, I've got a comment. Um, you know, it's, it's curious, this is one of the um, few waiver requests the board has seen where, you know, it, where you, it, it's kind of a hybrid, you know, you, you, you obviously have some very, very confining parameters when you leave Sinclair Road and turn on to Raspberry Lane. I think you, you know, if uh, if it was in strict adherence uh, with the road road standards, you know, the 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 50 foot right of way as you've shown is only going to increase the nonconformity and how it impacts the other um, uh, lot configurations and their structures and in, in proximity to it. But it's curious how when you guys get kind of past the the stream, how then you you work back towards compliance. And I, you know, I, I think that's a plus, you know, that it's not just a carte blanche waiver. OK, it's 12 feet all the way back where you can get it. It seems like there's there's a quantifiable um, attempt to do that and it's and it's feasible too so you know i i think that is a plus to the to the application i think we looked at it at all angles and i think the board um forced us we had a lot of these things we had talked about internally and i think having it on the record and given the opportunity to continue to this meeting um with some of the details um certainly helped us be able to i think explain the proposal a little bit better any comments from the board on this christy no she's no I'm just yawning she's yawning yeah. my apologies <laughs> <laughs> i had two dogs snoring behind me it's making oh, me perfect. <laughs> was that the yawn emoji <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, and much, I just think it's a much more satisfactory explanation, and that's all that I felt we were really looking for. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and it's a, a more definitive plan um, mm -hmm. to clearly attempt to meet the code so, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. the letter from the butter too helps. Yeah, the letter from the butter too helps. <clears throat> Uh, Tracy, any comment? Uh, just uh, it, it it seems to be a good um, way to resolve this, and I and it uh, also appears to have minimal impact on the wetlands. So that that looks mm -hmm. like a good thing. 
Any comments from the public? Hi. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. This is um, Bill and Ann Metzger. Hi. And uh, we'll we'll say this only briefly. We're in Florida right now. <laughs> um, we want to thank um, you all for considering this issue. We are the abutting neighbors um, above Raspberry Lane on on the on the top side, with the two lots there. And we uh, participated a little bit last um, December. And um, so thanks to Kim and to you all, and especially to, to Greg for putting together a, such a thorough explanation. And we are entirely in, in favor of this and um, hope that you all will concur as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comment from the public? All right, I'm gonna close public comment and I'm just gonna go through these. Are you doing the same? Yeah. So you know, with these waiver requests, they're a bit nebulous. So <laughs> there's no checklist, there's no official form. And essentially, um, as Kim just reminded me, we're going through uh, six one one A B. <laughs> C. Yep. Right. So, and, and um, bear with me as I read A, B, and C again. So, yeah. So, we're, and we got a vote on each one. So, so, however, in such cases, the board must find that the proposed plan brings the road into compliance as much as is feasible. Um, there's our first motion, and I would think that uh, with the additional information tonight that um, it's it's much it's demonstrated much better as being as much as is feasible. I make a motion to guess what you said <laughs> that the road is in compliance as much as feasible per blah 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 yeah per yeah per the additional c1 plan submitted with the with the letter dated january 12th yes i second meredith's motion <laughs> my waffling <laughs> <nothingness>. <laughs> All those in favor, Meredith? Randolph, aye. Christy? Anastasia, aye. Tracy? Tracy Keller, aye. Myself, William Hanley, aye. All right, then um, item B, the proposed plan will provide safe access to and from the property. Uh, I think they have evidenced that as, um, as shown by the um, also the letter from the, the Mount Desert Fire Chief. That's C. Oh, sorry, that's C. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, take take off the fire I would take off the fire chief. Oh, oh. Um, I make a motion that the proposed plan um, provides for safety in and out of the property to and from the property uh per the citation <laughs> whatever it is yeah per per the letter and plan received january 12th mm -hmm. yes that's my motion sorry dated january 12th dated january 12th 2022 yeah Second. Mm. Got it. Oh, okay. Second that. I'll second that, Tracy Keller. All right. All those in favor, Christy. Anastasia, aye. Tracy. Uh, Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Randolph, aye. Myself, William Hanley. 
now's the fire chief reference uh, and that the item C, the proposed plan will allow for access to the site for emergency vehicles. And considering uh, what's the date of the fire chief's letter again. Well, December 8, 2021. Yeah, so based upon the fire chief's testament. And, I'd say in the plan. Yeah, based upon the plan submitted and the letter of the of the road being accessible for emergency vehicles received from the fire chief dated December 8, December 8th, 2021. Uh, it the proposed plan does allow for access to the site for emergency vehicles. So, so can we get all that? I think Tracy <laughs> was the first motion. Yeah. Yeah. Meredith Tracy. seconded. Yeah. Heidi, did you get all that? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I did. It was a little convoluted. Messy. But I got a uh, section C, the proposed plan will allow for the access to the site for emergency vehicles per the letter from the fire chief dated 12-8-2021 and the plan submitted is what I have. Thank you. And now I've forgotten who was the motion in second. Sorry. Was it Tracy and Tracy. Meredith? Tracy, and Tracy Meredith. Thank you. All right. All those in favor, Tracy? Uh, Tracy Keller, aye. Meredith. Meredith. She frozen? Oh. I just ask me. She looks frozen. Sorry. Oh. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Randolph, I. Christy. Anastasia, I. Myself, William Hanley, I. All right. So is there a final motion of the, the waiver? No, that's just those three. All right. Three, I think. Well, there you go, Greg. Your waiver request is approved. Granted. Granted. Thank you for all your time, and I hope you all who are um, at there tonight have a have a safe drive home. Thank you. And can, can we speak again, please? Go for it. Thank you all very very much. This is yeah. uh, very helpful and very practical, and we're appreciative. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, uh, item six, other. I know Meredith probably wants to talk about being vice chair. I want to talk about not wanting to be vice chair. <laughs> please, will somebody please take that over? I think Who's going to be vice chair next? I think Christy would make a fantastic vice chair, Meredith. I thought I was the secretary. <laughs> and I think Tracy would make a fantastic secretary. There you go. <laughs> uh, you know, last time this came up, I asked what are the roles and responsibilities? Kim. When Bill can't chair, you have to be the chair. You just got to steer the ship. That's all. When's the next time you're not going to be around? <laughs> uh, when's the next board meeting? <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill often seems to, not too infrequently, has uh, conflicts of interest as well. So you get those as well. Right. And then, of course, if Bill decides that he doesn't want to be chair at all anymore, you're chair. Yeah, and that's a whole nother discussion. I, if there was ever, if anybody wanted to ever step into the chair shoes, uh, feel free. <laughs> Happy to discuss. So, Meredith, you're... Um... Am I correct that you were staying on the planning board at least until uh, the quarry business sits down? Is that true? Yes. Are you staying but on I, beyond that? Are you entertaining staying on beyond that? 
I am. I really, I really did not want to be vice chair, and I very much resented being my cha vice chair against my will. So that was a lot of why I, but I didn't want to abandon the quarry. But if I can get out of being vice chair, I consider staying on longer. Oh, oh, okay. That was, um, that was, that was a lot of information. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, uh, I can, if Bill promises not to have a conflict of interest or not, not be present for at least a little while till I can be a little bit more of an understudy in terms of process, um, I can take a crack at that. I, uh, you can try. I don't think you ever get it. <laughs> I don't know. Did you say I, I should cry or I should try? I said you can try, but I don't think you ever get it. I'm, I mean, I feel like we're still constantly weaving our way through meetings and what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I learned something every hearing, Meredith. I mean, it's, it's new territory every hearing, it seems like. But, um, and it's I, I'd like to think too it's 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 also a team effort you know and we're all pulling each other through the process and, mm -hmm. and Kim, Kim's such a huge help Heidi's a huge help you know um, all, all of us so mm -hmm. I, is there I any kind of um uh vice training with um MMA I know there's like planning board um you know training um which i always send out once i get the brochure sent to me but you know i could certainly look on the mma you know website to see if there's any upcoming either zoom or in-person trainings for planning board members but i know in the past when planning board members have gone it wasn't really to do with the procedures or the you know what you're what you guys are supposed to do as board members is talked about subdivisions and other thing and I actually I, attended one as well. I I remember when Ellen was chair, I remember she had like a procedure book in her. Yeah, doesn't uh Jen usually provides that. I don't yeah, know why it's not in this bag. In, in front of us. I mean kind of a just a a list. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's your planning board manual. Yeah, there and there's like a bullet list of how to conduct the hearing and the different things you do as you right but like i say i by if i see something christy i'll flag it and send yeah. it your way um like i said though any type of training that comes up that i can't that i catch i forward to you guys and the town does pay for you to attend it so yeah so. it does you know it's just you know if i'm going to take on a role i want clarity on what the expectation is and any resources or tools that might exist it sounds like the the process document might be the most valuable. Um, and I do have rudimentary uh, Robert's rules of order training, which we sort of kind of use in some instances. Um, yeah, so I don't know that I'm up to like, uh, you know, step up behind Bill next week, but, um, you know, I, I'm fine taking a crack at it as long as, you know, I've got the support of everybody else to like, uh, trip, fall, fail, you know, it's like so often um, these positions and roles uh, include, like I'm sure Bill has a magical scepter where you just sort of wave it over my head a couple times and all of a sudden I'm magically whatever you say. I, I <laughs> and that's how we do these things, right? Totally. We're here to help you through it. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll I do think that, I think that it would be really helpful actually uh, just because you're in front of people, I know I just feel like I get completely flustered. There's a checklist that you get, which certainly helps. If you mm -hmm. don't have that in front of you, it does seem completely overwhelming. And what's that? That's sort of a guideline. But I do feel like it would be, you know, that there could be two pages for like, if we're doing a non-conforming use, first, we need to check that it was advertised, that like basic things that we go through every time. But when you're in front of everybody, they're like, okay, now remember, what are those things that we need to ask? Is there any conflict of interest? Mm -hmm. When does the public hearing end? That just like procedure yeah. that I feel like could be like a quick outline just so that when you're running a meeting, 
you can just go, okay, I did that and not have to think as well as be in front of people. You know, it's Yeah. I mean, I think it's either like, a, um, like you said, an outline or oh. it's a cheat sheet or it's like a process flow document because sometimes we go that, you know, it's like, are you doing this or that? And then you follow That's the path. This. Huh? It's like a process flow document. Yeah. And that yeah, was that's, what, yeah. Um, Chairman El Ellen Brawley used to use. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. She just read through it and it would kind of keep her on track. And then she could mm -hmm. kind of you know really dive into the the thinking part of the application without being consumed by the process. Does any of that stuff still exist anywhere? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, that would be worth seeing. I mean, you know, I think what what uh, Meredith is talking about a little bit too. It's like I don't know, you know, it's like playing shoots and ladders, right? You know, without a board game. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what's on What's on the agenda again for the twenty six? You have a fence application coming before you, and then you have a continuation um, from the December eighth. Um, again, it's the private road over here on Harborside. All oh, right. I won't be at that meeting. Yeah, but Christy, I, we don't have anything coming before the board through our office anytime soon, and I, there's no conflict of interest for me on on those items on January 26. Okay. Well, I think if somebody maybe can point me to whatever we have that might exist then I would probably look at that a little bit while you are chairing, you know, to kind of like vet it a little bit and see what it looks like. Because I, I agree with Meredith, because even, you know, for anybody in the future, like having a little flow chart or a um, process flow diagram or something like that would be helpful. Uh, but that needs to be done before you need it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm game. I think in a very roundabout way, I'm saying I'm game as long as everybody is extremely and excessively uh, forgiving. <laughs> so Kim, you're gonna look into mm -hmm. like planning the MMA options and wherever yep. that. Yep, that, that I'm writing it down. Great, thank you. Yep. Does anybody wanna make a motion to- Oh wait, is there a pay raise with that? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. You somebody. No, 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 no pay raise. Sorry. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bill's like, ah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I kind of do feel like the chair position is enough extra work that if we're going to all be paid, the chair probably should be paid more, but that's for another time all equal across the boards um so anybody care to make a motion to have christy as the vice chair Meredith? i'll make a motion to make christy the vice chair i'll second that all right all those in favor meredith randolph aye tracy tracy keller aye myself william hanley aye congratulations christy <laughs> I feel I feel like I was just in a firing squad or something. <laughs> Wait until you have to run a meeting. <laughs> so now we gotta we gotta vote Tracy as secretary then if Tracy's okay with that. I am okay with Tracy. It's a really hard job. I did a lot. <laughs> I make a motion to make Tracy chair or a uh, secretary. I second that. Uh, all those in favor, Meredith? Aye. Christy? Aye, Anastasia. And myself, William Hanley, aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Did I get a mantle, like a different yeah. color mantle? Yes. <laughs> you know, the other thing I'd like to point out to the, the public still in attendance here, we still have two vacant <laughs> So we have the board is consists of five regular members and two alternates. The two alternate positions are available. If you are interested in joining the planning board, I'd encourage you to talk to the 
someone at the town office. It's so much fun. It is. It's <laughs> very rewarding. All right. Is there any other other? Kyle's going to be running the meeting next week for you guys. Okay. In attendance. Yeah. Um, but it's still going to obviously be the same. Yeah. Okie dokie. Don't forget that piece of paper because that's for your annual report. This is for my annual report. All right, we got to close. Do you need a All motion right. to adjourn? Please. Please. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn this meeting, Anastasia. I second Four. that. All those in favor, Christy. Anastasia, aye. Meredith. Aye. Tracy. Tracy Keller, aye. Myself, William Hanley, I. Thank you. Quick question before you, before you leave, if I if I may, um, when will the recording be available for this meeting? It'll uh, it'll be uh, the YouTube will be put on the website tomorrow. That's great. Thank you very much, Kim. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, we did it. We're done. Thank you.